welcome to the first episode of the final third um i guess first let me kind of introduce what's going on here what this whole thing is about um i'm phil nana uh this is essentially my show but more or less i want to look at it as, as the soccer community of montgomery county show um because that's essentially what we want to do it's a forum where we can talk about everything soccer um everything just the lifestyle of what it takes to be a soccer player here and just overall how we see soccer in the dmv in this Montgomery County area and how we can improve on it. Um, so on this show, a lot of times we'll bring on guests just to talk about their experiences with soccer. Usually more times than none, they'll have some kind of relation or tie to this area and they're doing bigger things in life and we're just trying to figure out exactly how we can uh, keep that going or how we can use that to grow the soccer community here. So with that being said, the first guest on the show is... Uh, you know, somebody who's from the area, not originally, but kind of grew up here, you know, played soccer here. Um, he's also one of my closest friends, uh, Mr. Diese. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. First of all, let me say congratulations for your first show. Appreciate it. I know it. you've been thinking about this for a long time and you wanted to create something and bring the, the soccer community together, um, create a platform for it. So first of all, big, big congratulations on, on getting the show kicked off. Thank you. Thank you. Say. So yeah, man, nah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, I think like, uh, I guess it's only fair that I say congratulations to you too. Uh, on starting, you. Uh, you, you know, the effective trainer. And as a matter of fact, go ahead and tell everybody what, 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 well, let's first talk about everybody, how we met. Um, and uh, how what soccer means to you and things like that and how you tie into this. Yeah, so um, Yannick Diese, uh originally from Congo, grew up in South Africa, south side of Johannesburg in a place called Alberton. Uh, family kind of decided to move to America uh, when I was 18 years old. Um, growing up, always been playing football, soccer, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, played their academy teams, things like that, able to come here and popped into Montgomery College where I actually met you <laughs> on the soccer team yep. at a tryout. Uh, funny enough, we were arguing on the pitch of like if it was a foul or not and we wanted to fight each other. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it was a pretty crazy story. But, uh, but after that, realized that we kind of like the same music, kind of have the same ideas in sorts of, of life and where we try and where we want to head forward, things like that. So, uh, yeah, and then we just picked up from there, became friends and started been kicking it ever since, man. Yep, yep. Yeah, man, I, I think it's crazy how like soccer brings people. I feel like it's been like that my whole life. Like nothing else brings people together more for me in my life than soccer does. Yeah, I think that that's part of the beauty of the sport, right? I remember, um, I think you were dating a girl once. Who, uh, once, was, once, who was okay, once there were, a <laughs> ago. once upon a time you were dating this girl who when we were playing soccer and she was watching us play and yeah. she said that um, she said you soccer soccer the life of soccer is it never ends it's like you guys are always playing soccer you're always living in it you're always wearing soccer gear you're always watching games you're playing FIFA it's, <laughs> it's not like my my other friends who play American football who play basketball it's more like seasonal yeah it's not and I was like, yeah, I mean, this is, that's football, you know, it's just a lifestyle. And, mm -hmm. and most of the times you find that your friends, if you're in the soccer scene, your friends are in the soccer scene. You right. know, I, I go to, to parties and, and events and if somebody doesn't play soccer or doesn't know about soccer, I don't know what to talk to them about, you know? It's yeah, like it's, you know? it's a weird thing. Yeah. I and mean, but if they say like same thing about Manchester United or if they say anything about football, then we can get, a, get along very well. So yeah, it really, really brings uh people together i think so 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 we talk about i mean soccer does bring people together but most importantly i think this is apparent in your life and my life as well soccer also takes you to different places or gets you to see the world in a different yeah, way yeah big Could time you, yeah how, how has that been in your life so um after college playing here at montgomery college for a season i wanted to i wanted to go and play professionally abroad or, right. or uh, pursue some uh, professional avenue um, I also was trying to play at a big college and uh, what I did was I moved up to New York City and, and 
found a, a team called Brooklyn Italians who, who were pretty, really strong team, very ambitious. Uh, and I learned so much about football then. And I met some of my closest friends, some friends from abroad, from South America, who taught me a lot about the game and um, would also help me on the coaching sense, right? And and uh, falling into coaching and uh, understanding football from a different way and meeting other people from around the world. It's also taken me to, to, to partnership with and doing projects together with people in Europe and, and pe- working with people uh, on the West Coast and in Africa to eventually now where I'm in a really good position in working with the PSG Academy of, of New York City and, and trying to build a French style of football in uh, in America and in the East Coast of, of, of this country. Yeah. So how's, how's that having to build, you said, French style of football? And I think it's really important you're working for PSG. If I'm not mistaken, you're a DOC over there for a certain yeah. age group. Um, and you're trying to incorporate this uh this long lived I mean when it comes to soccer history France is in the prominent like they're you know the most historical if not yeah. you know uh, country in soccer now you have to implement these values these uh, little things into a system that's based in the American system where they're not known for soccer how, how is that how's that yeah it's, it's difficult I would say the most challenging part of uh of implementing our philosophy and our ideas in football is getting people to understand why we do certain things. Uh, For example, we uh, like to focus a lot on body mechanics, uh, agility, coordination, balance from a young age, which um, I understand with all due respect that in, in football here in America, it might not be a priority or it might not be as important, but we find that it's very, very important for kids, uh, players to be able to control their bodies. And if you can control your body, you can control your feet, then uh, it becomes second nature. Then the only thing you need to do is control your mind after it. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, once you can do that, then we find that development of a player, uh, of a team is easier and more effective. And uh, yeah, but it, it's, a, it's a constant balance, constant challenge, but we, we work hard towards, uh, towards it, yeah. So I want to elaborate a little bit more on, the, um, on that, that physical aspect of soccer that you're talking about, the balance of coordination, the little bit of strengthening, and essentially what we call plyometrics, Yeah. right? Um, you feel it's not done enough in American soccer as it is in other European countries. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, for example, when I see other coaches or when I see other coaches coach their teams or when I see other coaches do their warm-ups or when they when we're training when we're playing in tournaments or things like that uh, it always I we like to focus on for example we'll warm up with uh, a ladder or mm-hmm. we'll warm up with some agilities or we'll warm up with uh, uh, one one balancing foot and you and you're passing the ball with the other foot mm-hmm. and uh, or short movement with a with a sprint afterwards um, I think that when we talk strength in football mm-hmm. or in America, they mm-hmm. uh, or in certain other places, we uh, it might mean uh, going to the gym and yeah. getting your upper body strength Sorry. or bench pressing. And uh, but I find we find that that causes an imbalance. Yeah. And what we mean by strength could be being able to balance on one foot while playing a pass to the other foot, right? Because essentially in soccer, you're, you're always on one foot. Exactly. So you exactly. Foot, you're you're it's basically on one foot so uh being able to to balance your body your core your 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 your, your upper body on the one foot while playing the ball with the other foot mm-hmm. we find that as being strength mm-hmm. and uh which helps with the plyometrics with the mm-hmm. with the coordination with the balance with the mm-hmm. and and all these other uh activities so that's 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 crazy because uh at montgomery college of course coaching at montgomery college i get to see the back end of of the kids that have been developed in this nation of course you know they're coming in their 19 20 21 so they're already fully developed and um um, it, it's crazy how some of our best players struggle with balance of coordination, the basic fundamentals of balance of coordination. Because uh, just like, you know, we talk a lot, we, 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 we give each other advice, we give each other different ideas. And, you know, we talk about the plyometrics thing. And over the past few months, I've been implementing that at the college level. And I realized some of my best players who are really, really good struggle a lot with their balance of coordination. So um, you're left to question, like, what if, what if they had that? 
you know, in, in their arsenal? What if they were being, de- what if this was being developed from when they were 10, 11, 12? How much better would they be at this point? Exactly, right? I, I think it's pretty evident in uh, when you see some certain plays, especially when, you, when they're doing individual training and, and things like that. Um, when you really look at the finer details, you could really see uh, the, the evidence of lack of coordination, balance, agility, strength, mm-hmm. or uh, the surplus of it. You know, um, mm-hmm. I also see it when a certain uh, players, uh, when you look at top uh, players, their, their feet move really quickly. They can mm-hmm. readjust their body very, very quickly. And I think that's a result of learning to balance from a young age, learning to do quick feet from a young age, the same way as you're walking or mm-hmm. the same way as you learn how to sprint, your body mechanics, how to run correctly from a young age, if you do that, more and more and more Mm -hmm. it's better I'm not saying that you should throw your seven year old child in a gym or you have to have them balance on a on a on a you know on a wobbly cushion or something but I think that simple thing as being learning how to skip being learning how to run through a ladder being learning how to 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 go from side to side how to balance on one foot and and things like that and make it a fun game I think all of these are are very important in the development of a, of a footballer, of, mm-hmm. a, of a soccer player. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I, I So, I mean, with this idea of what you think uh, soccer could be, and you've mentioned the detriments, the bad part about soccer in the United States, uh, what are what are some of the, the things that you would want to keep? What are the things that they do well here that you would think should stay implemented? One of the things that you think we need to change, like yesterday, like drastically change in the system? Um, the things that I like about American uh, soccer in America is um, that there are. <laughs> See, I, I like how he has to really think about it. Like, no, no, no. It's, no, it's, no, it's no, very no. few and far in between. Uh, no, I, there are very, very much a lot of positives because I think that youth football in, or youth soccer in America is is very good. Mm-hmm. Um, the quality of some uh, DA players and, and things like that are very good. Uh, the physicality is always uh, yeah. is, is always there. The uh, their intensity of the soccer games could could always be there it might not be in the right manner in terms of the right tactics or the right uh, decision making Mm -hmm. but the intensity at least is is there and and the kids know how to play quickly and they can uh, uh, think quickly Mm -hmm. and and those things I think are very very good um, starting points for for soccer here um, for sure yeah okay so now let's change gears a little bit Uh, let's talk about um how you want to implement some change in this community because i know one of the things that you're big on is figuring out a way to make soccer better in this community you know um and i know you've been doing little things uh but now you're doing actually a big thing and it's actually uh written on your on your on your t-shirt so could you tell us a little about the effective trainer so yeah uh the effective trainer can i just throw in the effective trainer.com everybody go check it out um yeah. instagram yeah. facebook linkedin all the beautiful social media spaces yeah. um and uh show us some love and we will definitely show you some love uh the effective trainer is essentially a uh a re- an online platform of which coaches players club owners uh organization rec league all the way to uh, professional DA developmental um, academies can go go into and find resources in terms of the drills, uh, games, um, topics of discussions, mm-hmm. uh, blogs that we that we uh, books to read, um, philosophies that you could read about and try to educate. Uh, yourself your team your players mm-hmm. uh, on how to develop as a as an effective player mm-hmm. as an effective team i find that um if we think about it like this if a player is a really good player but maybe is in a community where the level of of soccer or the level of coaching isn't mm-hmm. good yeah um you might he is in a disadvantage now because he's yeah, he or she's getting let down by the system, the system of having a, a good coach uh, using the right drills or using um, 
the right effect uh, ways to train mm -hmm. to, to benefit their development. But the uh, kid that could be just as good or even slight, uh, even a bit better, worse than that player than player A. Um, this yeah. this player is surrounded by high level coaches, mm -hmm. top quality drills, top quality thinking, mm -hmm. um, basically training in the best environment. And that second player will develop a lot, uh, a lot better and a lot quicker yeah. and more effectively uh, simply because he's lucky enough to be in a different location or he's lucky enough to have parents that can afford a, be a, be yeah. a better club, a better environment. Yeah. And what we try to do as effective trainer is to try and bridge that gap, mm -hmm. is to bridge the gap of um, uh, coaches having a platform where they can find the best materials mm -hmm. uh, organizations can have a platform where they can find the best materials they can read about the best from the best minds of the world they can uh, read the blogs and communicate to, to the community of coaches around them about the the, uh, the best ideas to develop footballers and, and soccer players so that the the time in which they deliver de develop is, is a lot faster it's a lot more effective and mm -hmm. can cover more ground so that's basically our mission uh, it's a global mission uh, it's completely free everybody can use it and just uh, make it your own so yeah I, I think it's a beautiful thing i think it's something that um i think we liked growing up as you talk about players growing up in an environment where you know you don't really get the best coaching you don't really get the best soccer um for example us at montgomery college i think our practice at montgomery is consisted of coming running till you can't feel your lungs anymore and then going out on a full field exactly. one touch two touch three touch depending on how many whistle the the coach blows and that essentially was two and a half months of training in our season you know and right. it wasn't until when we got to go and start playing pro luckily by the grace of god start playing pro start playing in college that you start to realize damn like there's so much more to soccer than what the heck I've been taught the last 18 years of my life. Exactly. The point is, and, and, and I'm going to be frank and blunt about this. I think that a lot of, especially university coaches and some club coaches, you have coaches that have been there for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. They've basically just been grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that the quality of their training is really yeah. good or, or the quality of the, the knowledge of the game is very good. As the uh, game but, evolves. But they've just, and because the game evolves and there's new things and new ideas, Years, or they're just maybe not so passionate about um, about about the game like that. But then you have they, but they are leading uh, a group of very talented and, and thirsty young players. Uh, but they don't know how to lead them. They don't know what to do. And so I think that that trend could, needs to needs to evolve a bit, and we yeah. need to start to wake up because by by the time that you're in college mm -hmm. and and uh, you are in a, a program even though you're a really good player you're on your program where maybe not giving you or stimulating all your areas of football to develop mm -hmm. there are players like Mbappe who's been in the right program in the right system and he's scoring goals in the World Cup yeah. yet you are in the same age yeah. and so we have to really start to push uh, the rhetoric really push our development and um, really try to change every aspect of the quality of training starting from our rec programs all the way up to our the travel, professional, professional. Uh, no, I agree players. yeah I agree um, I, I I love the website I love the idea I love not just because you're my best friend but if I never knew you I think these are things that I would want to implement as I do at the college but also at the at the facility you see right behind us um, all our trainings will be based on what we get off the effective trainer um, some of the like the little things that I like about it is one it fits every level of coach. So um, I like to think of myself, I study the game of soccer a lot, you know what I mean? I think I'm pretty well uh, versed at coaching and the evolution of the game, so I'm kind of caught up on that. But there's still things on there that I'm like, wow, I never knew that. Or wow, this is really cool to implement. So I know we've been talking about how like it's for you know players who have underprivileged coaches or coaches who are kind of straggling, but I think also think for good coaches and coaches that are willing to just keep growing and getting better, that's also there too. Um, also, one thing that I really like about it is it's very easy to follow. It's very easy to grasp. You know, I've been on training sites. Even the USSF sites has something similar where they have layouts of drills and things like that. And sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Or you don't really see the point, the why, like you said earlier, the whys, the whys, the whys. Uh, where the effective trainer gives you the drill, it gives you the why, and it gives you what to look for. And it's very, very good for me. It's very, very effective here at the facility. And um, I think it's something that everybody should take a chance at it. Let me ask, like, what in its development... Um, 
made you develop in such a way where it's very, very easy that every coach at every level, doesn't matter if you're an E-licensed coach or you're an A-licensed coach, there's something there for you. I think, honestly, it was a Johan Cruyff um, quote, actually, mm -hmm. where he said something to the lines of, uh, soccer is a very simple game, but it's difficult to be simple. But the more simple you are, the more effective and more... Uh, and better you will be and and it's and it's honestly it's the the pursuit of that because i find in football there's a lot of egos and the ego can feed towards um a feeling of greatness a feeling of um like you're on of leadership of bad leadership mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. i think that simplicity is the mother of all function right. you know the mother of all um Efficiency, the yeah. mother of all effectiveness. I, I quite think, I think this is, 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 is a beauty. Yeah, it's a general, it's a general idea in life, and 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 for me, life is like football. So, um, when when you can make things simple, mm -hmm. um, that is when you can trust it, you can believe in it, and you can use it on, on all different platforms. So, mm -hmm. so it's just uh, the inspiration of trying to keep things simple, so that in any person uh, looks at it can can use it and can use it in their own way. And yeah, yeah, man. So um, just to kind of wrap things up, um, I, I really enjoyed having you on the show. So, again, it's the first show. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks uh, again. Big, big congratulations on your new facility, I really appreciate on it, man. the show, on all the things that you're doing at uh, the school, the Montgomery College, and then the, and uh, all the and bringing the soccer community together and and providing a platform where. We are having these discussions where we are really focusing to to try and improve the the dynamics in the football over here. Um, I think it's a fantastic start. I think we it will grow tremendously, and uh, inshallah, like it will definitely uh, be uh, a pinnacle in this community. So. Right. So Spect. again, this is uh, Yannick Diese. Um, you can check him out. Check out the Effective Trainer. Go ahead and drop the website. Yeah, the, the Effective Trainer dot com, Instagram the Effective Trainer, um, uh, Facebook the Effective Trainer, LinkedIn the Effective Trainer. So on all the platforms that this podcast is going to be on, we'll probably have a link or something like that at the bottom. IG it will be in the in the in the comments tab or something where you can go out and check out all this stuff. Like I said, this is stuff that I, I implement at the college level and it's worked tremendously over the past two years and we're implementing at the developmental level now. Um, so again, check us out as well. We're reporting from the uh, WCP, the World Class Premier Training Center over here in Rockville. You can also follow us on our IG at WCP Training Center as well. Uh, we'd we'll love to bring you guys more stuff, more forums on soccer development, more forums on soccer culture here, and hopefully we can turn things around here and now we can start seeing our nation, you know, in the World Cup and not just being in it, but actually getting somewhere as far as our goal and developing players here as our goal. So, Yannick, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, man. Of course. And um, guys, just check, check, check it out. Check us out and um, we'll see you guys in the next episode.